Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the structure of a medium scoring uh, team multimedia presentation slideshow. Now in this video, we're just going to be focusing on what is present in the slides and how that represents why the, the group received a medium score. We're going to talk about the elements that could have been included to help it receive a higher score. But let's keep in mind, we're just looking at what is visually represented in the slideshow. In the team multimedia presentation, the students who were involved in this project would have also verbally represented their information. So let's keep that in mind as we're going through the slideshow that we're just focusing on the elements of the slideshow or the multimedia presentation which is a required component but keep in mind that the students may have communicated some of this information in their verbal presentation. When we take a look here at the title slide one of the reasons this project only received a medium score is from this title slide where we say they are focusing on the reinforcement of wildlife trade laws and poaching that seems entirely too broad. Uh, what wildlife, which animals, uh, which trade laws, which regions, which legal systems, uh, what type of poaching, what kind of trade, it's entirely too broad to cover in just a 10 minute uh, presentation. So perhaps by making it a little bit more focused, uh, this group could have scored a little bit better. Now we'll see on our second slide that this particular group of students is focusing on what anti-poaching groups have done in the last 40 years in helping prevent poaching in Africa. Okay, which anti-poaching groups um, and where in Africa? One of the common problems of projects that are created by students in the United States is sometimes we lump all of Africa together as if it was a cohesive legal system when it really isn't. So perhaps by selecting one individual nation inside of Africa and a specific type of animal, maybe focusing in on uh, rhinos or focusing in on elephants or other types of animals that are being poached, the project could have been just a bit more focused. Here in the third slide, we see that the group does an excellent job of trying to establish the context of their problem. We see some very clear visual communication with these disturbing images of animals that have been the victims. And we see that the group does an excellent job of identifying a key term that the audience would need to know in order to understand the complexity of their problem. They identify the key term of poaching. And for the purposes of this argument, they're going to say that poaching is the illegal hunting or capturing of wildlife animals. So as you're putting your project together, think through, does your project require communication of key terms to assist the audience? Providing those definitions will help the communication of your argument. In the fourth slide in this group, the group does an excellent job of visually representing the most significant issues related to their project. In this slide, the group answers the question, why is this investigation important? important. Uh, as you can see, the group includes some citations for their information and the use of an infographic helps us to understand as the audience that this isn't just a problem related to one very specific problem, that it's actually very complex. And we see at least three significant issues that need to be addressed. Building on that communication to further illustrate the context of their problem, in this fifth slide, the group does an excellent job of providing context by including some statistical information to let us know the significance of the problem. Uh, which animals are being impacted the most negatively. The inclusion of statistical data is in, uh, an essential component to score well because the audience needs to understand uh, the overwhelming impact of this problem. If the group just says it's bad, that doesn't really support the argument. It doesn't really compel the audience to want to believe in the argument. We need some clear statistical data and the use of charts and graphs definitely improves that. Uh, if I were to make a suggestion on how to improve this, perhaps two separate slides that indicate uh, maybe one slide with the elephant poaching in South Africa chart on the left hand side and then a separate slide that uses the chart on the right hand side and uh, blowing those up so that 
it was large enough for the audience to read might have improved the visual communication of the argument. Uh, here we see that the group goes back to identifying negative impacts of the problem or the issue that is the focus of their project. Uh, once again, we need to communicate the so what or why is this problem important enough to need to be addressed. And the group wraps that discussion up once again here with an excellent choice of a visual. This infographic about the poaching dilemma, uh, although there is a, a bit of a misspelling or typo there, uh, what we can see is that this infographic clearly communicates some statistical information about the context of the problem, but perhaps visually this could have been improved if the infographic was expanded to cover the entire slide so that visually it would have been more helpful for the audience and that could have helped the, the team to earn a higher score. Now here we see that the group gets uh, in slide number eight to the solution. They're suggesting reinforcement of wildlife trade laws. Now one of the reasons this group did not receive a high score is they only presented one possible solution and it's not particularly focused. Um, high scoring samples tend to have at least two possible solutions to the problem and those proposed solutions need to be more focused. This group could have scored better by offering up suggestions for two specific laws that need to be reinforced. In slide number nine, we see that the group is using an infographic once again to assist the audience with understanding the relationship between the solution and addressing the problem. Now, if this infographic referenced specific laws and connected those laws to reducing the harm to specific animals, the group could have scored more points. Uh, as always, I want to recommend the use of infographics to communicate uh, the process uh, as to how your solution will address the problem. What's the first thing we need to do to solve the problem? What's the second thing we need to do? And how does this help us to address the problem? Uh, here in slide number 10, we see that the group is attempting to score points by discussing the implications of their proposed solution. How will uh, adopting their solution impact various stakeholders? But this discussion is cursory at best. If the group connected the claims made in the bullet points to research, uh, one way to communicate that to your audience is the use of parenthetical citations, which visually connects the claim or the evidence to academic research, they could have scored just a little bit better. Uh, once again, we see they're uh, continuing to talk about implications here in slide number 11. And once again, trying to talk about the impact of their proposed solution on various stakeholders. But once again, it's not particularly thorough. Specific groups are not necessarily identified. And I'm not sure about the connection between the quote and uh, the bullet points on the left hand side. Once again, the use of parenthetical citations could have helped the group here to connect their uh, claims in this particular slide to evidence. In slide number 12, we see that the group does make an attempt to discuss the limitations of their proposed solution to addressing the problem and to build a compelling argument for how the pros of their suggestions uh, significantly outweigh the negatives or the cons, but once again, it is simply just listing the cons of the solution. This is not a thorough discussion of the counter argument to their proposed solution. In order to identify and thoroughly uh, discuss the limitations, I need to connect these claims. Once again, parenthetical citations would have been helpful here. And also, by not thoroughly discussing the cons, uh, here they identify overpopulation of species and various goods can't be made. Maybe by making that a little more specific and connecting it to evidence, overpopulation of which specific species, uh, which goods could not be made. What's the negative impact to that on the economy? Connecting that to some academic research would be a thorough conversation about the limitations of their proposed solution and would also thoroughly identify multiple perspectives in their subject matter and would have helped significantly. Um, 
Here we see that there's an attempt to summarize their argument. Uh, once again, some bullet points that may or may not be directly connected to evidence. We're not sure because there aren't any parenthetical citations. Um, remember, once again, parenthetical citations on the slide, they serve as a visual cue to the audience to let them know that the things you are saying are connected to credible academic research. Once again, though, the problem with their summary of their argument is there was really only one proposed solution. It wasn't particularly narrow or focused. And if you were to revisit that early in your slideshow and give very specific suggestions for either laws or policies that need to be changed, it makes it easier for you to summarize and connect your summary to the academic research. Uh, projects that earn higher scores for the team multimedia presentation tend to have significantly more sources of evidence than this list here would suggest. Uh, from here, we can only see four sources of credible academic research that are connected or used throughout the slideshow. Higher scoring ones would have considerably more than just four sources. And uh, the group does an excellent job here of identifying the images they cited. Once again, you need to cite all images you use. Now, if your group creates your own infographic you don't need to cite that but any image you borrow from the internet whether it's clip art or an image that you pulled off of Google you need to cite it properly in order to score well as you can see going through this slideshow this group did some things well but there are some very easy simple fixes that they could have made in order to score better. I hope that this explanation assists you as you're building out your team multimedia presentation. Our key takeaways from this have a very focused suggestion or set of suggestions for solving the problem. Make sure you do an excellent job of establishing the context of the problem. Who are the stakeholders that are negatively impacted? Why is this important? And whenever possible, use infographics and if you're going to use bullet points, try to connect them to your academic research and the way you visually communicate that is the use of parenthetical citations in your slideshow. Good luck.